Hey. All right, guys. I'm so excited. You don't have to show Are you going to do spot duck? I'm going to do spot duck. I'm so excited that our story this week is called Spoon. Called yeah. Spoon. Yes. It's all about a little guy named Spoon. And I know you all know what a spoon is, don't you? What do you use a spoon for? Ice cream. Oh, ice cream. Ice cream. We use it to eat, don't we? Before we start our story each week, I want us to go over some vocabulary words that help us understand what we're reading. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see my piece of paper at home, but I know the boys and girls in Ms. Turnage's class can. I can, I can turn off the bright lights and keep the light on. Okay, I don't know if that will help. Let's see if this will help, if you can see it. Can you see it at home? Give me a thumbs up if you can see my paper. Leave erase board alone. Okay, okay. So we're going to go over two vocabulary words today that are going to be found in the story. And then tomorrow we're going to go over two more. And then Wednesday, I'm going to let you do spot and dot just like you did last week. Okay? So our two words for today are proper and blue. Okay? If someone is very proper, what does that mean? Oh my goodness, I'm very proper. Please say please and thank you. What does that mean, Abby? What does that mean if I'm very proper? Uh, to be polite. To be polite. I like that word, to be polite. Evie, what were you going to say? How can I say to have good manners? To have very good manners. If you are very proper, you are very polite, and you have very good manners, you always say please and thank you. Um, so we've got proper and blue. Blue is a what? Oh. A color. But you know what? Blue is one of those words that has multiple meanings. Okay? It has multiple meanings. So it can mean the color blue, and it does, and it's spelled exactly the same, but it can also mean an emotion. Evie, what does it mean if Miss Stuber is feeling blue? I'm not happy, right? Have you ever felt blue before on some days? Sometimes I feel blue, like when it's raining outside and I can't go outside to play or do anything outside. I get very sad and very blue, okay? So that's what that means in our story this week, blue, is it's very sad, okay? So your we're going to work on spot dot vowel trace again this week. How have you been doing with the spot dot vowel trace? Well, Everybody spotting the vowels and dotting the vowels? What are vowels? Can someone tell me? Gianna, do you know what the vowels are? Can you tell me what vowels are? You do see them in words. What are vowels? What, what are, what's one vowel, Gianna? You. U is one vowel. Who can tell me another vowel? Alana? A. A, what's another one? Harper? I. I, what's another one? Jessica? Sometimes Y. If Y is at the end of the word, it's it acts as a vowel. So we've got the letters A, E, I, O, and U, and sometimes Y if it's at the end of the word. So I put a dash in a Y to show that it's the end of the word, okay? So in your journal for Wednesday, you're actually going to do spot dot vowel trace, and I know that today is the 14th day of what month? September. So September is the ninth month of the year, so I'm going to put 9-14-2020. I'm going to skip a line on my paper, and I'm going to put spot and dot, okay? And if you're having trouble remembering what to do on Wednesday, don't worry. Guess what Miss Stuber put online for you? A video. a video. Don't worry, it's on the video. 
Okay? You're going to skip a line and you're going to put words, syllables, and sound. Right? Words, words syllables, and sound. And you're going to draw our little chart. So you can use the same chart all week for all four of our vocabulary words this week, okay? So you don't have to draw a new chart, just use the same one. But we're going to skip a line, we're going to put number one, and we're going to put that word proper, because we're very proper, okay? Who can help me spot the vowels and dot the vowels for proper? Yes, ma'am. What's a vowel you see in our word? O and E. O, here's O. And here's E, you're right. And I like to use a red, blue, or yellow crayon. And you're going to trace your vowel. Don't forget to trace it. It helps it stick out and see the vowel. Okay? So we've traced our vowel, spotted our vowels, traced our vowels. Let's say the word proper together and clap it. Proper. You ready? Let's do it together. Proper. How many syllables? Two. Two. So boys and girls, under syllables on the same line, you're going to put the number two because there are two syllables or two parts to that word. Now, when you are, if it has two or more syllables, you have to divide that word, okay? And so you're going to look at the first two vowels. I like to put my two fingers on the vowels, okay? And you usually divide after the first vowel. So I would divide my word right there, prop, but it actually, but sometimes the rules don't apply. So when I'm saying proper, does it sound right? Does it sound like that's where I divide that word? Proper, okay. All right, so we find the sounds in the first section of that word, the first syllable, pra, you ready? P, er, Ah, how many sounds? Three. Three, so I put a three there. Then we've got the second syllable, per. You ready? P, er. How many, syllable, how many sounds? Two. Two. Who can tell me what three plus two is? Add them together to get the sounds. What is it, Abby? Five. Five. Those at home, five. So on the very same line as my syllables, I'm going to put five for sound. Now let's say the sounds together and count them just to be sure. You ready? P, er, ah, p, er. Were we right? Yes. Yes, give yourself a thumbs up. We were right. Okay, good job. You're going to skip a line and put number two, and we're going to write the word blue. Who can tell me the vowels in the word blue? Harper? U and E. And what did we say happens when there's two vowels side by side? They what? What do we say, Jacob? Two vowels side by side, they usually what? Work. Yeah, they usually work together. So we know that U and E work together, so I'm just going to put one dot. Okay? And then I'm going to come back and trace my vowels. Okay? in a red, blue, or yellow crayon. So let's say the word blue and let's clap it to get the syllables. Everybody ready? Dominic, you ready? Here we go, let's say it and clap it. Blue, how many syllables? One. One syllable. So on that same line as blue, we're gonna put one for syllable. Are we gonna divide the word if there's only one syllable? No. No. We don't have to divide it when there's one. But we do need to say the sounds in that word. You ready? Say them with me. B, L, L. How many sounds? Three. Three sounds. So on the same line as the syllables, we're going to put the number three. Okay? That, boys and girls, is spot and dot for the two words, proper and blue. Give me a thumbs up if you think you can do that Wednesday all on your own. You think you can do it Wednesday on your own? All right, I'm going to count on you. All right, so I always love to go over our vocabulary words. Tomorrow, we're actually going to do two more vocabulary words, useful and realize. We're going to spot and dot them. Who knows what it means to be useful? Does anyone know?
know what it means to be useful? You don't know what it means to be useful? What do you think it means, Trayvon? You can use it. You can use it, Jacob? He forgot. Let's see. Somebody online? Daria, what does it mean to be useful? No, you use it. You do use it. It's full of use, right? What were you going to say? To do something. Yeah, to do something. To, if someone is very useful, you use them. Miss Rubio is very useful to Miss Stuber. She's my student intern this year, and she's over there running the computers. I'm using her every chance I get. She helps me grade your papers. She's very useful. And realize. What does it mean if you realize something? What do you think it means, Evie? Maybe you can like see something. Maybe it's clear. Maybe you can see something, Harper. If you, if you realize something you forgot. Oh, yeah. Maybe you remember something that you forgot. Remember when you get a good idea and you kind of have that light bulb go off in your head and you're like, oh, I just realized that. That's what it means. Realize you just you just understood. You just got it. It just became clear to you. Okay. All right. So we are going to read a story called Spoon. And today I'm going to try putting it up on the bo on the board for you, like Miss um, Harris does. Do you want to turn the light out? Maybe they can see it better. Okay. It's called Spoon, and our main character is going to be a what? What do you think? Can you guess? of the spoon. What do you notice about this spoon? Do you notice anything about it? Uh, what do you notice about the spoon? Uh, it has eyes and a mouth. It's got eyes and a mouth. Do, do your spoons at home have eyes and mouths? No. no. So tell me, just looking at this right now, do you think this story is going to be real or make-believe? Make-believe. It's probably going to be make-believe. Well, it not probably is. It is going to be make-believe. Okay? And it's actually going to be in the same genre as our story last week, A Visitor for Bayer. What genre was that? Do you remember? It starts with an F. A fantasy. It was a fantasy. Okay, and remember, fantasies are stories with made-up events that cannot really happen. Okay, when we're reading Spoon, I want you to use your reader brain, and I want you to listen for characters who cannot be found in real life. I can name one right now. Who's this guy? Spoon. Spoon. Can you find somebody named Spoon in real life? Uh, no. no, it's made-up. It's make-believe. Okay, pay attention for the setting of the story or where the story takes place. And we also are going to be taught a lesson in a fantasy. Usually you're taught some kind of lesson. Okay, so we want to learn the lesson that the main character learned. Okay, as you read the story, stop and think if you don't understand something. Do you know what good readers do if they read something and they don't understand it? They read it again to find out, to see if it becomes clear. They look at the pictures, they reread the words, they ask questions, okay? They use the, those pictures, those visual cues for understanding. Okay, so our story is called Spoon by Amy Rosenthal, okay? Are we ready? Here we go. I'm going to read in my book here, and I'm also going to show it up on the bright link, okay? This is Spoon. Okay. This is Spoon's family. What do you notice about Spoon's family? Somebody at home, do you notice anything? Jaden Wilson, do you notice anything about Spoon's family? They're all what, honey? They're all different kinds of spoons, aren't they? Are they the same size? No. 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 Are they the same colors? No. 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 In fact, if you go in your kitchen, when you go home today, I want you to look in your kitchen, and I want you to tell me, are all the spoons in your kitchen the same? 
Just like in Spoon's family, they are not all the same, are they? Very good. On Sundays, Spoon goes to visit his aunt, Silver. He has to be on his very best behavior there. She is very fancy and proper. Goodbye, darling. Ta-ta, says Aunt Silver. She's waving her little handkerchief. Ta-ta, darling. She's very fancy and proper. At bedtime, Spoon likes to hear the story about his adventurous great-grandmother who fell in love with a dish and ran away to a distant land. Okay, his great-grandmother ran away with a dish. My reader brain is saying ding, 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 ding. What else do you know? Do you know anything else that has a dish and a spoon? What do you think, Jacob? Is there something else? Some other? Uh, not a butter knife. It's a what? Butter knife. A what? A butter knife. A butter no, not a butter knife. Trayvon, do you remember what it was? Uh, look at the picture. Uh, uh, and the dish. A it doesn't Ooh, it just goes ran away, away uh, with a plate. No, the dish is the plate. The dish ran away with a spoon. It reminds me of the nursery rhyme. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a sight and the dish ran away with a spoon. Do you remember that from kindergarten? Yeah. Yeah, the dish ran away with a spoon. So it has a... His grandmother was the adventurous one that ran away with a spoon. Hmm. She's not very proper, is she? Hmm. Not at all. All right, Miss Rufio. Lately, though, Spoon had been feeling very blue. Do you see how he feels? Very blue. Just like those blueberries. What's wrong? asked his mother. You look a bit out of shape. Nothing, mumbled Spoon. What do you think that means he looked a bit out of shape? Dominic, what do you think it means? Sad. He looked a bit sad. Does it mean that he really changed shape? No. No, when you're blue, you don't really change shape, but you, when you're out of shape. But it kind of looks like Spoon is in the story, right? The illustrator made him change shape a little bit. Yeah. It's just that, I don't know, all my friends have it so much better than I do. Like Knife. Knife is so lucky. He gets to cut. He gets to spread. I never get to cut or spread. Yes, Knife is pretty spiffy that way, isn't he? So what is Spoon feeling uh, blue about? Let's see, somebody in Miss Harris's class. What was Spoon feeling uh, blue about? Ryan, what was Spoon feeling blue about? All of his friends is better than him. He thinks everybody's better than him. He thinks his friend Knife is better and has more fun than he does. He said he's so lucky. He gets to cut and he gets to spread. I never get to cut or spread. Okay? Yes? Um, you can also get a um, spoon and spread it out too. You could. You could use a spoon and spread. Good job. All right. Let's keep going. Here we go. And Fork. Fork is so lucky. She gets to go practically everywhere. I bet she never goes stir crazy like I do. Fork does get out and make herself useful, doesn't she? Here's Fork. Can you show us the next page, Miss Rubio? And Fork makes herself useful. Where, where is Fork being useful at? On the what? The on the grill, on the barbecue, oh. in a what? Salad. 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 In spaghetti. Cake. cake. The mountain of cake, right? Uh, how do the pictures help you understand what Spoon means? when he says fork gets to go everywhere. How do the pictures help you? How do they help you, Dominic? How do the pictures help us to understand? 
mobile seeing how much um, bulk is great? Yeah, we're seeing it, aren't we? The pictures are actually showing us what the story's talking about. Good job. Okay, Miss Rubio. And chopsticks. They are so lucky. Everyone thinks they're really cool and exotic. No one thinks I'm cool or exotic. Those chopsticks are something else, aren't they? Said his mother. Meanwhile, if only Spoon, Spoon knew what his friends were saying at that very minute. Er, we're gonna stop here. I don't want you to know what his friends are saying yet. I wanna leave us with a cliffhanger. But we know that Spoon throughout the story is feeling very what? Blue. Very blue. Let's make some predictions because good readers make predictions. What do you think Spoon's friends are actually saying about him? Does anyone want to make a prediction? Uh, Jalen Roundtree, take that down, honey. I can't see it. Jalen, do you want to make a prediction about what you think Spoon's friends might be saying about him? I hope you didn't read it yet. Did you read it already? Okay, so you think his friends think Spoon is lucky because he gets to what? Because he gets to what, Jalen? Maybe he gets to scoop stuff, so maybe his friends think he's lucky. What do you think? They might be talking about how cool he is. How cool he is? Why do you think they might think he's cool? Maybe his friends think he's cool because he gets to stir things. Colton, what do you think? Do you want to make a prediction? Colton's going to make a prediction. I'm almost done, Miss Turner. Oh, your bum sticks in under his What do you think, Colton? Colton. What do you think? Do you want to make a prediction? All right, I'm going to let one more. Sean, do you want to make a prediction? I know something's wrong with it. Sean, can we hear you? Okay, so we're actually going to stop right here tonight, and we know that Spoon is very blue because he thinks his friends are cooler than him. But we don't know what his friends are saying about him, do we? So we're going to stop right there. So your homework tonight is to go ahead and read the story. But I want you to stop on page 51. I want you to stop where it talks about Spoon doesn't know what his friends are saying about him. And we'll read the rest tomorrow, okay? All right, guys, you were good listeners. I'm very proud of you. Okay, I want my class and the people at home, I want you to stand up and stretch. Stand up, we just got the phonics left and we're good to go. Go to your own seats and stand up behind your chair if you're in my class. Five, stand up and stretch. Four, stand up and stretch. Three, stand up and stretch. Two, stand up and stretch. One, you can stay right there, but we're all standing. Okay, next time you don't get to uh, what I said to do by the time I count to five stretching, then you get to lose a dojo point. If you do do it, then you get to get a dojo point. Okay, so it's real. Somebody needs to mute over here. Let's see. Elise. I'll do it for you. I got you. I hear your daycare thing. What'd I do? I got her pen. Okay, there we go. All right, you ready? I need to see your mouth so you can chin it because you're far enough away apart. If you're laying on the table, stand up straight. This is gonna get some energy. Pep in your step, put all that down. We gotta use our hands. Okay, those of you at home, you're gonna say it out loud, right? Even if you're by yourself, because I can hear you. Grayson, Brooklyn, you ready? 
Randy, I can't hear you. I don't know what's wrong with. I'll fix the volume later. Okay, so we're gonna start out with rhyming. Ready? I do, you do. Get those hands rolling. You ready? Yeah. Woo! -hoo. If you want to unmute, you can. And say it with me. If you want to stay muted because it bothers your ears, then stay muted. Okay, here we go. You're gonna listen to hear if it rhymes. Slow dog. You say it. Slow, Slow dog. Thumbs down. down. You're only repeating me. Mean queen. Mean queen. Big mop. Big mop. Uh-uh. The two words and thumbs up or down. That's all I want to hear. Green soup. Green soup. Red sled. Red sled. Woo, good. Dry cat. Dry cat. They don't rhyme. Last one. Sad dad. Sad dad. Yay. Okay, now you're going to listen for the beginning sound. Beginning sound only. I say jacket. You say jacket. J, j, j. I say measurement, you say measurement. Mm. I say yesterday, you say yesterday. I say deliver, you say deliver. I say violet, you say violet. Good. We're going to move on. I'm going to say two words and you're going to put it together in a compound word. Ready? Everybody's doing it. I say air, no. I say airplane, put it together. Airplane. I say caveman, you say caveman. You, you. Doing it with me. I say play room, you say play room. Put it together, play room. I say farm house, you say farm house. house. I say sidewalk, you say sidewalk. sidewalk. Awesome. Now we get to punch it. <laughs> Standing up, off the table. Here we go. Yeah. Woo. All right, ready? We go up like this, and you go back and punch the last sound. Ready? Fl nope. Float. <laughs> Good. We're going to do hide. Hide. Now we're going to do stove. Stove. Good. Now we're going to do moon. Moon. Punch that last sound. I want to hear it. Club. Club. Good. Bath. Bath. <laughs> I didn't do that right. Bath. Bath. I want to break it down. Trip. Trip. Good. Okay, pull them punches in. And so, okay. Now we're gonna go to the next thing, and it's um breaking down the word. So I'm gonna say the word, and you're gonna break it down. Ready? I say stopwatch. You say stopwatch. I say ponytail. You say ponytail. Break it down. I say quarterback. You say quarterback. I say skateboard, you say skateboard. I say popcorn, you say popcorn. I say firewood, you say firewood. Awesome. Now, I have you add. Ready? I need you paying attention. You, re you hearing me? Okay. I have air, you have plane. Airplane, airplane. I have hand, you have shake. Hand, shake, hand, shake. I have rain, you have fall. Rain, fall, rain, fall. Do this with me, it's getting your energy going. Come on, I'm seeing you in live action. Come on. I say life, you say guard. Life, guard, life, guard. Awesome. Now we're gonna skip the page over here. And I'm gonna say some sentences. We have to count the words in the sentences. Be careful, it is difficult. So, you're gonna repeat after me. Did you bring your head, nope. Did you bring headphones? Did you bring headphones? 
See my expression? It's a what? Is this a statement or a question? A question. It's a question. Ready? Um, we got we got a new goldfish today. Ready? We got a new goldfish today. Six words. Next one. Is everyone here today? Is everyone here today? How many letter words? Four. Four. And that's kind of hard. We're going to get into that. So we're going to start drawing lines and stuff. Okay, now, you're going to get, when you come back to school, some of you, you're going to have this for a test. These are called nonsense words. Can you see the nonsense word? Yep. Can you see the nonsense word? Look close. You should have me pinned. We're going to do just a few. Ready, Sean? Ready, Sean? Ready, Grayson? I'm going to see you in the camera, Grayson. I can't see you. I just see Brooklyn. Hey, buddy. Ready? This is called, we got to do it fast. If you don't know it, we'll sound it out. Let me move over so you can see. This is called yad. Ready? We're going to do it together. Yad. Et. Num. Calm. Mid. Remember this practice? Hudge. Jack. Rip. Of. Say it with me. Bop. Yuck. Um. Um. I can't hear you. Lawn. Zodge. Ratch. Mess. Beg. Beg. Ready? Best. Hey, Gavin. Come on, buddy. Last. Kick. Pig. Dodd. Yes. And hatch. That's the last one we're going to do. Now, we'll put some of these cards up maybe to help you practice later. And if you're having trouble with this, especially first graders, you can practice on a, like a slideshow. Okay? Okay. I think your teachers are going to come back and get you in a minute. Ms. Harris and Ms. Stuber, you stay right here. And I'm done. Okay. And.